How's it going guys? Derek Craig here with willfieldbasics.com. As promised, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to this video that I posted last week where it's basically just going over a pump schedule uh, for the Utica, sh Utica Shale. Um, but as promised, this time I'm going to be going over the actual treating chart or the treatment chart. For it, I was going to do the exact same plan, but I'm actually going to do a different one just because that one had diverters and had a whole bunch more going on on the chart. I think this was an is, is an easier one to help uh, show you guys what all is on it and what it means. So we're actually going to be looking at a Halliburton chart. And if you actually want to see how this kind of looks in the field, that's another video that we did that you can check out. It's called What's Inside a Halliburton Frack Data Van. And so we actually went inside one of their data vans, and right here is their treating chart. And so you would see all this stuff if you're actually there on site. And so I'm going to be going over basically the report of an actual stage uh, that you, you, if you were in the data van, this, you know, you'd, you can watch this video and see what that would be like and what all is being monitored and stuff in the van. Uh, th that gentleman named Marlon, he works for Halliburton and actually walks us through pretty much the entire van and, and shows these displays. But what we're going to be looking at is the post-production report from that. So if you actually look here, this is actually, like I said, a Utica, Utica well here in the state of Ohio. And what I've done, it's a really big document. It has all these different graphs and everything. And what I've done, I've kind of separated it out to where we can see both the descriptions of what's going on and then the actual treatment schedule or the uh, treatment chart itself. And so we're just pretty much going to dive in. There's not really a soft way of doing this. It's and this is, like I said, this is actually a pretty simple uh, chart compared with some other operators and some other ways that I've seen people graph these things. So basically, there's a ton of stuff going on in the data van. There's a ton of stuff being monitored. And you're going to be able to produce reports and numbers and charts and graphs and everything for all of it. And some people decide to put it all in one graph. Some companies like Halliburton actually separates it out where you can see, like, here's your chemical slide, you know, all this kind of stuff. So we're actually going to look at the treatment schedules or this treatment chart. So, again, this is pretty much what the company man is. This is probably the, like the number one thing that the company man is watching on location as the stage is progressing. So we're going to dive into it and see what we can learn. So right off the bat, I just want to introduce you real quick to the different lines on this graph. So this red one here is your pressure. That's, I guess you could say, probably the most important one. Uh, that's, what you're, that's what you're watching for. You can learn a lot from the pressure curve. And then this green line here in this case, this Halliburton codes it green. This is going to be your slurry rate. So that's actually the rate at which you're pumping. So the way I kind of like to think of it, you're not really controlling the pressure. You're controlling your rate, and the rate affects the pressure um, to the largest degree. I mean, that's basically what it's one of the largest contributors, obviously, to your rate. So you're pumping into a well bore, and you know your fluid's got to go somewhere and whatnot. The, the the more rate you pump, theoretically, the higher your pressure will go, and so anyway, so that, that'll kind of help us get it to start diving into this these graphs here. And these down here, this light blue one is your slurry, your profit concentration at surface. So that's what you're pumping at surface. And then the pink pink here is, as you can see, it's kind of staggered offset from it. That's what the computers are calculating to be the bottom hole concentration. Obviously, you know, if you start pumping something here, it's going to take a while for it to actually reach the bottom hole. So you might start pumping uh, right here, and then it won't actually hit the bottom until, I don't know, 20 minutes later, something like that looks like, or 10 minutes to about 10 minutes later, in this case of these particular rates. So that's basically just done so you can, you know, if your pressure starts spiking or something, you know, it's in a response to basically what's going on down hole, right? So you can always kind of have an idea of what the concentration is down hole. And then likewise, this is the calculated bottom hole pressure. So this is your surface treating pressure. Like I said, that's what most people are going to be paying attention to for like most. Uh, but this is your calculated bottom hole pressure uh, based off of the, the surface pressure. So hopefully that's that's not too confusing. So diving right in, basically, first thing we're going to see is you, you open up the well. So this is, you know, basically the pressure at which they open up the well. So you can see they're opening up the well here. And then right here is stage two of this stage. You see they actually start pumping acid, and they're going to be pumping pad too. So you're going to be pumping acid so that you know it gets down to the perfs and actually will kind of, kind of help clean that area up, and then that way you're going to be able to treat the stage better. So that's the point of that. And then the flush is also where you're actually carrying that ball from surface down to the plug. So this is a stage where they're using plug and perf design 
to actually separate the pass stage that they did. So most plugs are going to have an area that you can flow through them and they're going to leave that, that plug open until you actually drop a ball and it seats on that plug and that's going to form your seal. Okay, so basically in this area here, they're, they're pumping. So they brought up the rate from zero. They're going to start pumping here. And then they, they're going, then they actually picked up rate. So once they kind of saw, so stage three, uh, they, they start pumping the pads. So once they kind of are comfortable in the, with, you know, they got the, the ball in the system and, they, and they've got their acid going, at whatever point, you know, they, they just start picking up rates. So they picked up right here. And then obviously your, your pressure is going to spike up as well because you're pumping faster into the well, pumping more into the well. So your pressure is going to respond and go up. And then they kind of keep on trying to raise their rate. And then they start getting close to where that ball is close to hitting that plug. So whenever you get within a reasonable distance per se or of the ball actually seating on that plug, you're going to want to slow down. And they slowed down to a little less than 20, it looks like, so probably around 20 barrels a minute, 15, 20 barrels a minute. So they actually slowed down so that when that ball lands on that plug, it doesn't you know, destroy anything. <laughs> and you can see, so they slowed down, and then right here, boom, your pressure spiked up. So you can tell that that ball sat on that plug. So now you've got a seal. And so now, basically, you're going to be forcing that fluid to go into the new perforations. That's basically what you can see right here. You can see where it breaks off right there. You've actually broke down the formation. And also you're going to, and and then the uh, acid's going to be taking effect as well. So if you kind of screw up on this one, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it's kind of basically just that area blown up so you can kind of see what's going on better. So six here is where they say, uh, so five is where the ball is set, and then six you can kind of, so if the ball seats right here, the pressure spikes. And so you can see where it started curving down. That's actually where it started going into the formation then. So your fluid started going into the formation because the rate was kept steady. So the rate's the same. So if your pressure change is, you know, something downhole changed. So it's actually, you know, it's sealed here and then it's starting to break down the formation, actually go into formation. So basically you're establishing your rate with your formation. That's what you want. So then you can see it continues to kind of drop down a little bit and they actually start pumping here. So they actually start gaining more rate. And as that acid continues to work, then um, your your pressure won't climb as much. So you can see seven right here, it says acid on perfs. So if you kind of see right here, this is what they're saying that the acid has reached. You can kind of see it, you know, as they continue to raise rate, the pressure doesn't respond as much. And that's, you know, partially because the because of that acid working, that acid is helping to kind of clear up that near well bore area. So it's easier for it to inject. It's given, you know, some place for that, that the water and everything you're pumping to kind of go to. So that's the reason your pressure doesn't respond as according, you know, to your rate as much in that section because the acid's taking place and it's doing its, doing its thing down there. <laughs> and so going back to this kind of the bigger overview here. So for, uh, this is where they start pumping their sand. So again, you know, you, set your plug, you, your acid was kind of working, and you see your, your acid started working, then you um, stepped up rate, and so they're they're going to try and head towards, usually people around here in the Utica kind of go to try and treat around 80, 85, 90 barrels a minute, uh, typically in the Utica. Just the, it's, for a lot of slick water designs, you want to have a pretty high rate uh, to get the type of frack that you want. But anyway, so at this point, so once they see that they've established rate and everything is going good, then they're going to actually start constant. They're actually going to start sand, so pumping sand at surface. And as you can see, it's going to take a while to get there. So they're going to start now, and that acid still has some time to work and whatnot. And they're going to continue to bump up rate as they can. They're going to try and keep working their way up towards their target. In this case, it's right here. So whatever that looks like, that was their target, and they pretty much stayed there and stayed steady through the duration of the frac stage. It's pretty much what they're typically going to be doing on most stages. They're going to try and hit that target rate. In this case, it looks somewhere around. 80, 82, 85 barrels a minute. And so keep walking that up and then they're going to hit that target stage or target rate and then they're going to try and keep that flat. And if you keep your rate flat, then you're really going to be able to notice what's going on with the, with the pressure. If you keep changing your rate, your pressure is going to keep going up and down and it's going to be hard to watch for signs like a screen out. So, you know, something like back in here, you know, where it kind of gets, you know, a higher pressure and your rate staying the same, it's showing you something's going on down hole. Uh, might not be accepting your sand, maybe it's starting to bridge off a little bit, kind of giving you a little bit of trouble, your pressure spiking, uh, but we'll get to that here in a minute. 
anyways, so they start pumping their sand here. And again, as I as I mentioned on you know this video where I go over the actual pumping schedule for a well, you're going to want to step up your rate of of your sand so and your concentration. I mean, so you're going to step up your concentration, start with a lower concentration, and work your way up. And if you want to learn more about that, go on this video and watch it. I'm not going to uh, be too rep repetitive here in my videos, but anyways. Um, so at that point, you know, you're starting starting to pump sand and you can see, so right around here, it should be hitting hitting the uh, the perfs or starts hitting uh, downhole and they're going to keep on walking up that concentration of sand throughout the stage. They're going to keep watching this pressure and see, you know, as long as you're not going up, should be good. And one thing that actually kind of was a little curious to me when I first sat through a stage and watched, watched them being pumped. You know, you're holding your rate constant, so why is your pressure stepping down a little bit? Well, for one thing, as you increase your your sand concentration, you're actually adding density per se to the fluid. So, you know, your bottom hole pressure is you're going to be affected by that. So, if you have a higher density fluid in the fluid column between surface and reservoir, that's a higher hydrostatic pressure that you're applying to it. So your surface treating pressure uh, will likely go down. So as you as you step up concentration, you're adding density and thus hydrostatic pressure. So your surface treating pressure won't be as high, because your your bottom hole pressure is basically going to be your hydrostatic pressure plus your applied surface treating pressure minus or you know with friction and everything like that in it. But for the most part, your hydrostatic pressure and your um, your surface treating pressure. Anyways, <laughs> so. Got a little bit of a side rail there, but anyways, you know, it keeps on going. This stage does pretty good, and then they start reaching here where it starts to kind of, the pressure kind of starts to raise up, and that um, probably made somebody a little bit nervous about maybe they're going to screen out or something. And, I'm, you know, there's a ton of stuff going on, at, you know, at any given time on our frack job, so maybe there's something that I'm overlooking. It might have to do with something about the chemicals. But I do know that if you look at, the, you know, if you look at some of the symbols on here, they actually increase their FR. So in between 17 and 18, which is kind of where it starts to spike here, they actually um, increase their FR from 0.4 to 0.75. So, you know, they were trying to reduce the amount of friction to help get that pressure down. So hopefully that, that makes sense given what I just described about the bottom hole pressure. Anyway, so as we get near the end of this now, you know, they've, they've stepped up to their final, uh, it looks like they were going to... 2.2 pounds per gallon of 3050 sand. So, you know, whenever they, they finished putting away all the sand that they were designed to, as accordance with the schedule, then they're going to stop pumping sand. Uh, but they're going to keep on pumping. They're going to be going into what they call flush stage at surface. So, at 22, this is where they start the flush. So, they're going to turn you know, basically stop pumping sand. They're going to keep on pumping uh, regular water, just the, uh, the clean, clean volume. They're going to keep on pumping that. Because you still, you know, you're you still have to flush that sand all the way out um, down your well and out into the perf. So that's the point of the flush and to make sure the well bore is clear. And as you can see, you know, once you stopped kind of pumping sand at surface, you know, your your pressure kind of started kind of going up a little bit more. Again, as I was saying, you know, once you take off, you know, once you reduce your, in this case, you're reducing your hydrostatic uh, head basically on it because you're lowering your density, you'll see a little bit of a pressure response. So I, I'm guessing that's one of the things that contributes to that little spike right there. But to some extent, you can't analyze every single little pressure spike <laughs> unless you're like, you know, a whole lot more information and detail on the job and, and looking for something specific and uh, better trained than I am on this. But anyways, um, so at one, you know, once they pump their, their flush volume, they're starting to taper off here, they're about done. And you can see their the here at the bottom hole, your concentration goes to zero, so it should be flushed all the way out and into your perps and out of your well. Um, so then, pretty much, you're done with the stage, and so you, you know, that here they basically call it quits and end the job, uh, as stated here on this job. So or on the, the stage description sheet. So hopefully that made sense. That's a lot to cover. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into um, that's net pressure, the chemical additives and stuff like that. That's Beyond my, I don't have enough knowledge on that particular, you know, category and and Halliburton's <laughs> chemicals names and what all they do. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so that that's the basics. And one thing I forgot to mention before they started it, they actually did a a uh, pressure test 
So they, I'd pretty easily bet, well, you could easily bet money that, you know, it's a 15K iron. So they're testing it to about 90% of the rated pressure rating on the iron at surface. So they're testing to somewhere around 12, 5, 13. I, I think I read it. So, oh, right here. 13, 5, 42 is their, where they tested to. So that's about 90% of 15,000. 15, so tested to 90% of the rating. And it looks like they also kind of did some lower pressure tests as well, held it for a little bit, make sure. Because when you do a pressure test, you want a pressure test at a high pressure, but you also want to check it at lower pressures as well, make sure that it's holding, um, just to make sure that you know the iron doesn't fail at high or low pressure. And so once that's done, then they actually started into the, the stage. So sorry, I kind of skipped that at the beginning. But anyways, that's the quick rundown. And you know, a lot of stage, you know, every single stage looks different. If you flip through this entire entire thing for every stage you know you'll here was the first stage so they didn't really have any pressure spike here towards the end that's kind of what a really good stage would look like no, I just didn't do this one because I copied this information from the stage two <laughs> and then found this one but anyways um, you know every stage looks different some of them you know if I looked hard enough I might be able to find one where maybe they did screen out hopefully not uh, they probably probably didn't I don't know who knows got to check through it but anyways that's the quick rundown all right, guys, so thanks for watching this video blog. Hope you found it educational and useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the comments section below, and I'll address them if I can. Um, otherwise, if you want to continue to learn more about this kind of thing and go more full circle, so obviously we talked a lot about completions and the actual execution of the treatment plan, but if you want to actually know more about you know the reasoning we frack and and, and also, you know, into some of the wireline stuff and more about the plugs and, and stages overall and laterals and how they got drilled and directional drilling and production and all this kind of stuff, then check out our courses at oilfieldbasics.com. Check them out and, and definitely check out our introductory uh, introduction to upstream oil and gas operations course. So I think you'll find a lot of information in there useful and it's a great way to support this channel. So thanks and hope to see you in the next one.